Good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael O'Malley here with the Hurricane Season 2020 update, part of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for August 10th, 2020, recorded around 3.03 p.m. Eastern Time. Well, taking a look here in the Eastern Pacific Basin real quickly, we do have an upcoming approaching hurricane uh, here in the Eastern Pacific Basin. Again, this is going to be a concern for some of the island chains down here. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce the island chain, uh, but you do have a couple of islands down here in, inhabited by roughly about 40 people or so, as I was made aware yesterday. Uh, but this is going to be scooting over or just near those islands, but for the rest of the area, including the Cabo San Lucas Resort areas, the Baja of California, your main concerns are going to be swells radiating outwards uh, from this developing hurricane and that will eventually kind of impact those areas down in here but other than that sensible impacts not really except for these two little islands down here that will be moving generally towards the northwest here and then eventually more towards the west uh, over the next few days or so before becoming a post-tropical remnant circulation out here in the cooler waters of the eastern pacific basin across the rest of the eastern pacific basin things are beginning to heat up as we have an active phase of the Madden julian oscillation we'll take a look at that here in a second but you can see three other areas that we got to keep an eye on even one area out here with tropical storm uh, with this tropical storm and developing hurricane one area out here another area there in the southeast pacific and another one heading almost near the central pacific basin Look here at the visible satellite. You can see our clearly defined circulation of this developing hurricane. A pretty nicely uh, central dense overcast there, uh, trying to develop uh, almost an eye wall like feature there. So that will be something we'll have to kind of keep an eye on. Again, you can kind of see these little island chains down here, but other than that, most of the impacts for the big island masses out here is going to be just these radiating swells. Uh, that is really about all for that. And in the Atlantic Basin, we do have an area to watch here, Invest Area 95L, with a 60% chance of development here over the next five days or so, but this is looking gradually unorganized today. And uh, if we could take a look at that here on the visible satellite from the College of DuPage COD Meteorology website, you can clearly see how we just don't have a well-developed center of circulation with this thing. Convection has been relatively sparse, and one of the main reasons why is we have all of this dry, stable, mid-level air to the north. Some of this is uh, in part because of the Saharan air and just general dry stability in the atmosphere, and we're not really getting any consolidation of thunderstorms and deep convection in this area. And that's really one of the things right now that's kind of prohibiting tropical cyclone genesis from uh, taking place here. This is well to the south and west here of the Cabo Verde Islands towards mainly the south southwest here, or west southwest. And this is mainly going to be moving due west here over the next few days or so, due western or northwest. And again, this dry stable air to the north is really what's going to inhibit significant development of the system. And then eventually, it's going to get caught up in uh, entanglement with a, a tut, basically a big dome of high pressure uh, out here that's going to be inducing a lot of shear around the system. And this is one way we can kind of take a look at what's going to happen. This is coming from the uh, AOML. This comes from uh, NOAA's Hurricane Research Division, if I'm not mistaken. And this is basically their experimental uh, NOAA models that they have here. So this is the uh, have Haves, I kind of hard to pronounce that. H A V S uh, for short, rather. But you can see here our big sprawling dome of high pressure. Talking about this big dome of high pressure that's just kind of sitting out here, uh, really being a blocking pattern from anything kind of coming out and turning out on to sea here. And that's one of the things. And we can we can move this forward here. This is Invest Area 95L. Uh, you can see it kind of highlighted here in black 95L. And you can also see the associated uh, lower pressures associated with that. But you really notice how that really doesn't take much shape here. Again, you might get an area of lower pressures develop for maybe a couple of hours but if we run this out all the way to the end of the forecast period by hour 66 here this is valid for thursday morning about one o'clock in the morning thursday 
Big dome of high pressure out here. Not really much has changed. You look generally lower than normal pressures out here, but you can see 95L, not really anything going on with it. And that's very uh, indicative that we have a pretty hostile environment out here. 95L is actually somewhere roughly located in about here, but it's just kind of an area of strung out vorticity at that point in time. And this is kind of one of the reasons why, and if we take a look, this is the uh, Madangeline oscillation and our convectively coupled Kelvin waves. This comes from Michael Ventris. He's a PhD major. And these Kelvin waves are kind of highlighted in the uh, lines here. These blues and purples are your uh, active phases that typically enhance tropical cyclone development. And in here, your reds and pinks are basically suppressed Kelvin waves that typically suppress Atlantic hurricane development. And your suppressed Kelvin waves show up in this uh, kind of brown color. Your uh, active phases of the Madden-Julian oscillation show up in blue. And you can see what we're going through right now is that we have a constructive interference going on with a uh, active Kelvin wave that's passing over the Atlantic Basin right now. This is going to be interacting with our system over the next day or so as this gradually kind of moves off towards the east here and propagates back over to Africa. We are still within this relatively suppressed Matt and Julian oscillation phase right now. You see another suppressed Kelvin wave that's passing over uh, the Atlantic Basin, the, the western part of the Atlantic Basin currently. And that's going to be one thing that's going to significantly hinder 95L as it continues this track off towards the, the west-northwest here because this suppressed Kelvin wave is going to cause suppression in the atmosphere and it is not likely to see tropical cyclone genesis occur uh, in a, a suppressed phase. Although it can happen, uh, but it is just not looking all that favorable. However, we start to turn our attentions out here to the uh, Eastern Pacific. This is uh, one week here into the future. This is uh, by uh, early next week. We have that suppressive phase of the Kelvin wave passing over. Uh, but you notice what's now starting to happen. Instead of going from here in the MGO, uh, the Mount and Julian oscillation, you're going to here. So that suppressed phase is now starting to abate and you're getting this phase this positive phase to slowly pass over by two weeks from now this active phase of the kelvin wave there's another active phase of the kelvin wave that kind of sets up over the atlantic basin then a pretty predominant suppressed phase of the kelvin wave right here but this Mount and Julian oscillation is causing for a lot of rising air in the atmosphere and that will gradually translate over Africa. So once we get to roughly the end of this month and then into early next month, tropical cyclone activity should begin to pick up quite substantially. The latter part of August into early September is when we are likely to have a pretty good burst of tropical cyclone activity in the Atlantic Basin. But so far, all is relatively quiet other than 95L. And we can kind of see that here. This is the uh, GFS 850 millibar uh, vorticity product here. The spin in the atmosphere about 5,000 feet off the ground. And you can see what we're talking about, that these uh, colors in here, the, the higher cyclonic spin values are in this darker red here, and that you can kind of see that in here. This is Invest Area 95L right out here. And we can just kind of play that here again. You're not really seeing the GFS be overly amped about this, and even out through the next 120 hours, the GFS isn't really excited with this. The Euro isn't excited with this. Most models are not really excited with a developing tropical cyclone in the main development region right now. And that seems to be pretty pretty understandable given the fact that we are heading into another suppressed phase of the Kelvin wave. The Madden Julian oscillation just isn't there yet. It's just not favorable. And you're not really getting a lot of overpowering per se. Now, I say this, but again, you need to continue to monitor because even though this isn't necessarily expected to be something, you know, we've seen tropical waves try to develop, you know, redevelop in here. So, not saying that's going to happen, but of course, it's hurricane season. We should all be watching. So, it's just something to kind of be mindful of. But 
The bottom line here is that right now, the deep tropics seem to be relatively quiet. Um, you know, even though we have 95L in here, but again, we're not really seeing much organization. There is some banding. You can kind of see some banding here occurring. Uh, but again, we have a relatively exposed center with no significant deep convection firing near there. So, you know, we'll have to monitor things. But again, I'm not really suspecting much in the way of development from that. All right. Well, that being said, I know today was a little bit shorter, um, but... Of course, you know, there's not a whole lot to talk about today. Uh, tomorrow will probably be a longer update because we'll go over sea surface temperatures and all of that good stuff. So stay tuned for that. If you guys want to check out my latest video, uh, make sure to head on over to my channel because I just uploaded a video going over Hurricane Isaias and the data collection efforts that I did for that. All right. Hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again tomorrow afternoon. Stay safe, everyone. I'll talk to you some more tomorrow.